I'm Anjali. I'm a second year fellow from University of South Carolina and today I'm excited to share with you this interesting case which is called the belly uh, from belly ache to blood storm a mesenteric sclerosis case presenting with macrophage activation syndrome. So this is a 51 year old African American male who is presenting to the hospital with daily spiking fevers, arthralgias, myalgias, severe abdominal pain, and weight loss of about 20 pounds in the last two months. And this has been going on with the daily spiking fevers for the last two months as well. When he is admitted to the hospital, he is worked up with blood work and CAT scan of his abdomen. First, the blood work does show this highly inflammatory state, including high levels of CRP, ESR, ferritin, soluble IL-2 receptor, triglyceride, and LDH, going along with uh, something called as macrophage activation syndrome. He also has cytopenias, which includes low white cell counts and low hemoglobin with low RBCs. He is also seen by rheumatology, and the workup for autoimmune diseases is mostly negative except for a non-specific positive ANA1 to 116 homogeneous pattern. He is worked up by ID for infectious diseases, and the infectious workup was very vast, and all of it came back as negative. He was, along with this, worked up with GI. Um, talking about his CT abdomen first, so this shows um, this area over here that shows edema, some enlarged lymph nodes, something called as misty mesentery, which is inconsistent with something called as mesenteric paniculitis. So coming back to the case, uh, he was treated with steroids for macrophage activation syndrome and then discharged home. He was then followed up in the clinic and he was started on anakindra along with tapering of prednisone for macrophage activation syndrome. Meanwhile, with his mesenteric paniculitis, he was also biopsied and the biopsy results came back very consistent with mesenteric paniculitis and was neg negative for malignancy or IgG4 disease. After this, in the clinic, he starts um, going lower on the prednisone, and when he reached about 20 milligrams, however, all his symptoms started to come back, his lab markers started to worsen, and they were very consistent with his MAS coming back, and mesenteric paniculitis was again seen on a repeat CT abdomen when he presented with re uh, repeated abdominal pain. At this time, um, he is at 20 milligrams of prednisone on anakinra, so we decide to up his prednisone again to 60 milligrams of prednisone daily, and then we decide to take off anakinra given it didn't work in his case, and we put him on azathioprine and hydroxychloroquine daily. Uh, again, he improves with the high dose of prednisone. Then we try to taper his prednisone down. However, tapering his prednisone down to about 20 milligrams, his symptoms start coming back again, and his lab markers start to get worse. And at this time, there is not much data on how to treat refractory mesenteric paniculitis, but there is data about uh, using DMARDs, um, Colchicin, there's some data on rituximab uh, using it in IgG4 related mesenteric paniculitis or malignancy related paniculitis. So we decide to use rituximab in his case. So he gets two cycles of rituximab six months apart. And with rituximab, he has amazing results. His, all his symptoms do go away along with him being able to pre taper down his prednisone and he was able to come off of prednisone completely within a year of starting rituximab. And since then, he has still been maintained on azathioprine and hydroxychloroquine, but for the last year, he has not been on any prednisone, and he has not required redosing of his rituximab again. So in conclusion, um, this is a case of mesenteric paniculitis, which is with a very rare presentation of macrophage activation syndrome, which did get better with treating mesenteric paniculitis with rituximab and pre uh, prednisone, azathioprine, and hydroxychloroquine. And finally, um, this is a, one of the first cases reported where we have used rituximab in a case of mesenteric paniculitis where we were not sure what the underlying cause was.